cute. It's got whiskers. Whiskers? What are they? How do they work? Chris went down to Kent to find out more. Whiskers are specially adapted, thick sensory hairs that grow around the face of almost every mammal. We humans are one of the few exceptions. How they function is fascinating and can reveal an awful lot about their owner's way of life. So how exactly do whiskers work? I feel a visual metaphor coming on, in fact, rather paradoxically, I can hear one. Because out in the woods, we have an old-fashioned gramophone player. But there's a direct relation that you can see between the needle here and the animal's whisker. You see, this needle is down in the groove on the record, and every bump, every twist and turn is being transferred into the sound that you can rather unfortunately hear coming out here, the sound of jazz. But the whisker is very similar to this because it too is in contact with every bump, every twist and turn in its environment. And instead of turning it into sound, in the mammal's brain, it's turned into that sensory feeling so it can feel the world. I'm at the Wildwood Trust in Kent. Dr Robin Grant from Sheffield University specialises in sensing ecology. She's a whiskers expert. Robin's been doing some remarkable groundbreaking research into exactly how small mammals use their whiskers. Why isn't it we haven't learned so much more about them earlier? I think one of the big things has been the advances in technology. And the thing about whiskers is that they're very small and they move very, very fast. So we film in high speed so that we can film slow motion. And um, we can film kind of slowed down by about 20 times so we can look at the whiskers really closely. This super slow motion footage is then used to analyse the finest details of how the mammals move and use their whiskers. Today, Robin's studying the, in my opinion, dull dormouse, the aquatic water vole, and a harvest mouse. Robin, on this little harvest mouse, you can see his little nose and the whiskers that are around it flexing constantly, aren't they? Yes, that's right. So he's moving them backwards and forwards, and we call this whisking. Whisking? Whisking? Is that term in the Oxford English Dictionary? I don't know if it's made it in there yet, but it's going to definitely be. <laughs> but it's soon. made it into your papers, is it? I'm sure. Definitely. Whisking, that's a great phrase. It's this movement of the whiskers, the whisking, which is the focus of Robin's research. But we must be clear that the, the whiskers themselves are dead material. They're just like our hairs. So the sensory apparatus is always in the, in the follicle, and they must be super sensitive. They are super sensitive, and yeah, you're totally right. That's what sets apart whiskers from, from like, the hair on our head. So all you can do is, is touch the whisker very, very gently, and they're able to detect it at once. OK, Robin, let's have a look at what we've got. Okay. This is our harvest mouse, isn't it? Oh, look you at that. You can see him yeah. forwards and backwards, so this is whisking. Yes. And then you can see that as he moves around the block, one side makes very gentle touches against the block, whilst the other side is really reaching round and trying to put as many whisker touches onto the block as possible. And this is what we call minimal impingement, maximal contact. Minimal impingement, maximal contact. It's brilliant. God, let's move on to the water vial. I can't wait. OK. Harvest mice up and about in the vegetation, these guys on the ground in the water. It's got to mean different whiskers. Yes, yeah, so the first thing that you notice is that the whiskers of the vole is so much smaller in comparison to its body size. I imagine that in water voles that their sense of smell would be quite important when it comes to finding their food. So the whiskers may not need to be so super, super sensitive. It might not be their primary sense, but they're using their whiskers and they're integrating all their senses together so they get as much information from their environment as they can. So the whiskers aren't moving all the time. Yeah. There's not a lot of whisking. OK, well, I'm going to give the harvest mouse a 6.8 out of 10, but I'm afraid I'm going to mark the water vole down to just a 2.2. So let's bring on the dormouse and see if we can't get a 10 for whisking. <laughs> so this is a really um, young dormouse. And he's really pushing his whiskers forward, so he's able to scan where he's about to put his feet. Dormice live up in the trees, so their whiskers work in three dimensions, pointing outwards, upwards, and straight ahead all at once. And is this all new? Yeah, this is brand new. We haven't even published it yet. It's absolutely fantastic and fascinating. Well, you're waiting for a score, aren't you? I've got to tell you, 
I'm a bit of a Simon Cowell, actually, so I'm going to give it a 9.8. Oh. I don't like the angle <laughs> of the tail. I'm sure it makes prehensile sense and is perfectly balanced, but it looks a bit ridiculous. <laughs> That was the most exciting film that I've been lucky enough to do for Spoonwatch for some time. Because, you know, you, we see those whiskers on all those small mammals. I'd never really thought about just how they were used or how useful they could be. But her research is absolutely fantastic. I had such a good day. I was so, driving home, I was genuinely really, really excited. But